Okay, let's learn how to make a JAP quiz. In Moodle, I have given you a folder of Japanese characters. What you need to do is you need to go and pick some. Um, doesn't much matter what they are, they don't make any sense to me either. You can just right click and save image as and save it into a folder on your desktop. I'm going to go and pick six. Now I've already done that, so I've already got a folder now with my six characters in it that are going to be the six characters for the quiz. The next thing I need to do is I need to fire up App Inventor. So get to App Inventor using your shortcut or Google search for it. We're going to start a new project. We need to give it a project name. Hang on a sec, I'll just get rid of my old project. Back to my projects. New project. My Jab quiz. So after it's done its little whizzy thing, we get a default screen one. Now the idea behind your Jap quiz will be that there will be a number of screens where screen one will be the switchboard to other screens. So let's say screen one is going to be my menu and I need another screen that will contain a character quiz. So I'm going to add a screen called character quiz. Say OK. So each time we add a new screen, this drop list of screens gets bigger. We can't rename screen one. We can, if we really wanted to, rename anything other than screen one. So the idea would be first to develop a switchboard that allows us to switch between screens. That's actually really easy. All we need is a button. So I'm going to go and use a button, drag a button onto the interface. There'll be other stuff that I'll want to put on the thing here as well, including branding and other cutesy graphics and titles and labels. But for the purpose of this exercise, let's just look at how we navigate from one screen to another. We need a button. I'm going to rename that button. I'm going to name it BTN Jump to Quiz 1. OK. Now I've named it. I named it based on its job. I now go and change what's on the button cap. That's down here in the text property. Instead of text for button one, jump to character quiz. Or something like that. Maybe I'll just trim it down to character quiz. That's what my button now says. While I'm at it, I should put a button on my character quiz screen that will eventually do the job of coming back to the home screen, that is screen one. So I'm going to switch to character quiz, and I'll put a button there as well. Let's rename this BTN Home. OK. And change the text on the button to say Home. So its job will be to take us back to the other screen. Let's program that first. So we've got to switch to blocks to add programming. So I'm switching to blocks. Now we've got access to a whole bunch of code buckets, as well as buckets of code that the things we have added to our screens know how to do. And I actually want the BTN home when it's clicked. So I'll drag that in as the control. And what we have to do here is we have to actually get it to when we click on the home button, open up a new screen. That's in the control bucket. We look there, a bit of the way down, there's a little block that says open another screen with screen name. Pop that in there. And then we need to tack onto the end of this a piece of text with the name of the screen we want to go to. Now the names need to match exactly. So I'm just going to go and check because I can't quite remember the exact capitalization. So I'm just going to drop that list. Oh yes, okay, it's capital S screen one, no gaps. So I need a piece of text with that exact name in it. I'll choose an empty piece of text, connect it, and then type the screen naming, screen one. Lovely. So 
what I have now done is I have created the instructions so that when somebody clicks on the home button on the character quiz, it will jump to screen one. I'm going to switch to screen one now and make my jump to quiz one button do something. Now, what was the name of the screen? Character quiz. Oh, capital C, capital Q, no spaces. I've got to remember that because it's got to match exactly. So again, clicking on the button. When the button is clicked is the thing that we're trying to trap. And we've got to put inside this thing instructions on what to do when you click on the jump to quiz one button. What was it again? Character quiz. Okay. Control. Open another screen. And tack a piece of text on the end of it and fill out the little text thing to match the screen we're jumping to. Character quiz. Is that right? Yes, character quiz. Cool. So what we've now done is we've built a little app whose only job so far is to jump between screens. Let's test it just to verify that that actually does what it's supposed to do. So I'm currently now running the emulator. It takes a little while to run. I probably should have run that first, but you'll see the process. It builds a fake phone. Once it's built a fake phone on my screen, it then loads my app onto that screen, onto that fake phone and shows me how it's working. It takes a little while to set up, but once it's set up, um, we can keep changing our program in blocks and screen designer and the new versions of the app will be running on our phone over here. Let me just unlock the emulator phone. I think it's ready to go. There we go. So it's got to set up a pretend phone. It does all sorts of cutesy stuff including a little battery charger which is sort of cute. And after a little while it'll run my, my app. Five seconds. Okay, so it's just about ready to show me my app running. As you can see, that takes a little while the very first time you run it, but you can now leave that running while you're editing your app, and you can see what the app now looks like when it's running. So you'll notice that we're now on screen one on our phone and there's a little button here that says character quiz. When I click on character quiz my app switches to the character quiz screen and gives me a home button and that home button lets me jump back to my main screen. So if we want two or three language activities then we will need to add here our screen one, which is our main screen, the one that has the buttons that lead to other places, and two or three other screens that contain language activities. And you just repeat the process as we just did. Let me do another one. Let's add another screen. Let's say we're going to do an app, a, a thing that allows us to draw with our finger. So I'm going to add a screen. It's going to want to know what to call it. Let's call it, um, I don't know, draw character. And OK. Right, so we now have our blank draw character screen. We can put a button on there to go home in just the same way as we did. I'm going to rename that BTN Home change its text to say, oops, to say home. And then I will switch to blocks and add an event when the home click is clicked. Open another screen with the name screen one. And we're done.